dropped off the kids. How is it that today's vlog was longer than yesterday? How do you guys do it? I don't get it. I really don't get it. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm going to talk really fast so I can get through content so this video is not as long. It's so not the edit as long. Oh, and another thing. I'm going to include less footage of me traveling everywhere, okay? Here we go. Let's move faster. Coffee time. Hey. Yo. How's it going, man? I've been asking about you for so long. Yeah, dude. I was... It was my vlog. Oh, you're vlogging. What up? It's my hey, buddy Keelan. What's up, man? This guy got mono for like <laughs> two weeks. Yo, I've been praying for you, man. Seriously. Thank you, man. Yo, we miss this guy. Oh, I just see this guy every day here. <laughs> All right. Yo, yesterday they brewed Columbia. Yeah. We got, <laughs> I, 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 Columbia. I'm like, no way. Yeah, no as way. Soon as I'm gone, we get extra coffee. Hey, I'm glad you're feeling better, bro. Yeah, I know, man. It's, it's good it's, seeing it's, you, it's dude. Be back, dude. All right, got my coffee. Time to go fast. Office time. Today is going to take a little bit of a serious tone. I wanted to take time to talk about something that's happening in our state. I live in California and uh, an article that I read yesterday, I'll put a link down in the description below on my YouTube channel, but an article I read yesterday talked about a bill here, something called ACR99, ACR99. And let me just read the first paragraph of this article here for you. It says, tomorrow morning, which is now this morning, today, tomorrow morning before the Assembly Judiciary Committee, Assemblyman Evan Lowe plans to argue for a resolution that tells religious leaders in California what they should preach from their pulpits. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 99 calls on counselors, pastors, religious workers, educators, and institutions with great moral influence to stop perpetuating the idea that something is wrong with the LGBT identities or sexual behavior. ACR 99 also condemns attempts to change unwanted same-sex attraction or gender confusion as unethical, harmful, and leading to high rates of suicide. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, you could click on the link down below and check it out yourself. I wanted to take time just to talk about this a little bit. Now I know I'm risking a lot of debate right now, so let me set this up here. Let me set up this conversation in my thoughts. There's a lot of mess going on. There's a lot of mess going on in our country. For those of you who are watching and you're not a Christian, you probably think the church is a lot of mess. You probably blame the church. I think there's a lot of mess going on. I think that both sides of the spectrum needs to do a better job on recon. I'm basically talking about research. I think both sides of the spectrum, whether you're on the church and Christian side or whether you're on the side that disagrees with the church, I think that both sides need to do a better job of research, making sure that what you read and what you hear is in context. I think there's a lot of mess going on where people are saying a lot of stuff and everyone thinks that it's fact, it's 100% true. I think a lot of people have forgotten that anyone can say anything, it doesn't mean that it's true. Let's do proper research, proper recon, make sure everything's within context. Basically, I'm saying get all your facts straight, get all your facts straight. I'm not saying that the church is doing the best job, nor am I saying that churches don't make mistakes, so please, Listen to what I'm saying. I feel like I need to add a bunch of disclaimers because, again, I'm diving into a very sensitive topic. I think both sides need to do a better job at research, recon, and understanding thoughts in context. The second thing I want to say before I get into this is that our whole country, probably our whole world, and maybe this is nothing new, but it's becoming a, maybe a larger problem now, is that we are very, very emotional right now. I think there's a lot of hate going on. Hate has always been here. Hate has always been an issue. There's there's haters right now. There are, There's so much hate going on right now for bad reasons. But with this specific issue right now, there's so much hate. And, and again, I'm not advocating either side right now. I'm not saying that the church is perfect. I actually believe that 
the church is filled with imperfect people and that's kind of one of the reasons why the church exists that we want imperfect people to come to seek out a rescuer a perfect rescuer i'm not saying that either side is perfect i think the church is making mistakes and i think the other side is making mistakes all sides make mistakes we're all we're all imperfect my main point is that there's so much emotionally driven hate going on right now there's so much emotionally driven blogs and articles and videos and content and this is the worst combination emotionally driven especially when it's anger and lack of research and and context and recon that is the best combination for a cult <laughs> that's like the best combination for like a con artist it's just it's bad this is really really bad very messy and i just wanted to establish that context before i get into this article this article was uh online it's on californiafamily.org and it's talking about acr 99 and what i think is really wild is this resolution the solution that creating and pushing for and what i don't understand i, I really don't get this is how is acr 99 how is this coherent with the first amendment how is this coherent with religious freedom how is acr 99 coherent with just the the logical just let's, let's talk about logic right now how is this coherent with the logic reasonable thought that you're trying to achieve something for one side or one position at the cost of limiting freedom for another position now this is where it gets really dicey and i don't I don't have time right now, nor do I think people really want me to talk about this for an hour. But the other side will say the same thing, right? They'll say, well, that's exactly what the church does. The church is trying to promote religious freedom at the cost of our freedom to do uh, same-sex marriage. It, it gets so dicey. Um, I, I, I don't have time to get into it. What, what I do want to focus on, though, is... I don't know how ACR 99 is coherent with separation of church and state and with religious freedom. ACR 99 is proposing that churches now have to follow a government sanctioned, um, basically a government sanctioned doctrine. It's like we're in China. It's like we want to do what China does. China, churches in China, churches in North Korea, those are all government sanctioned. You can't operate a church just freely and do whatever you want. Of course, here in America, you can't do whatever you want either. There's laws. But here, we're talking about religious doctrine and religious beliefs. I'm not, I'm not getting into violence and just thinking that you could use your church to beat people up. I'm talking about just religious doctrine right now. If you're a Christian, um, please read this article. And if you're a Christian and you attend church... You need to know about these things. ACR 99 is proposing that the, that the California government will will limit what pastors can say at the pulpit. Now, let me again, I, I have to keep on saying this because I think at whatever point you're watching this video, don't take me out of context. I know that there are a lot of bad examples out there. I know there's a lot of pastors out there that are bad examples. I know there's a lot of churches out there that are bad examples. So. Um, please do not throw us all in the same bucket. Please don't put me in this bucket over here. Uh, I know there are pastors out there that are preaching hate, preaching really, really harmful messages. I, I agree with you. I, I'm not like them. Our church is not like them. In fact, I know thousands of churches that are not like them. What's sad is that they are the ones who are always being publicized in media and on social media. I'm just simply focusing on religious freedom right now. I'm just simply focusing on the First Amendment. Again, I'm saying this again. I know that the LGBTQ community will say the same thing. It's our it's our right to get married. So I know it gets dicey. But 
This ACR99, this is a classic, classic case of what you need to achieve, what you want to gain will be at the cost of limiting freedom for another person. This gets so dicey because that's what this whole marriage debate is about because the other side will say, well, you want to limit our freedom uh, to promote your religious doctrine. It's a pretty dicey situation we're in. I don't think the solution is to give up religious freedom. So can you guys comment down below? Like I, I'm asking as a genuine and humble request here. I'm trying to learn about this right now. I really don't understand how, whether it's Democrats or the left or whatever it is, I don't understand how people right now in our country are able to fight for this, this view that you totally have the right to believe in. That's why we live in this awesome country. But they're trying to fight for this freedom at the cost of limiting someone else's freedom. I, I don't I don't get that. I don't really understand how the First Amendment is not protecting religious freedom right now. Everyone is just kind of bulldozing with this emotionally driven anger and frustration and they're fighting for this freedom for same sex marriage and all these things at the cost of the first amendment I, 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 this is this is just wild to me if you're a christian please read this and if you're a christian and if you're a non-christian please hear me out when i say this the solution is not to protest go form picket lines and and just start yelling and just being bad examples that is not the solution i would never advocate for that i would never advocate hate speech there's another dicey and messy situation the definition of hate speech let me just say that hate speech cannot be disagreement that's insane disagreement cannot be considered hate speech that means everyone hates each other all over this planet sports marriage relationships brothers sisters moms dads aunts uncles grandmas everyone hates each other because you disagree that can't be what hate speech is. I just wanted to share that. It's a little bit serious today, and I know I'm kind of getting into a sensitive topic. Please don't take what I'm saying out of context. I would never, ever support or advocate people hating on other people because they disagree on their sexuality. I believe in the second greatest commandment of scripture, love one another as yourself. I wish more people were doing a better example of that. I, I need to be a better example of that. I am not perfect. I... I need to do a better job at that. So I'm not even advocating myself as the example. I think Jesus is the example. But I want to let you know, for those of you watching, and you're not a Christian, you don't attend church, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I would never advocate and support hating on other people and treating them poorly and harming them because you disagree. And people will define hate and harm in so many different ways. Check out this article. It's really scary, I think, what's going on. Look at all this plenty, plenty of parking now. No one's here. Eating lunch very late today. It's 1.30. Hi. Hi. Yo, I was looking for you guys. I was here yesterday and I was gonna talk to you. I don't have a lot of subscribers, so it's yeah. not gonna come up. So if you look up PJS, you have to filter it by channel. The three yeah, PJ. it's like PJs, yeah. Hey, it's my friend Daniela. Hi. <laughs> She's my friendly nectar juice maker. She Hello. said I could put her in the vlog. Thank Come you. Check your fresh juices and nectar. Yeah, yeah Daniela. Residuals. It's always good to get some leftover. Thanks, Daniela. You're awesome. I just want to say good news. I did not cheat last night. My wife made a healthy meal. Very healthy, healthy, organic vegetable noodles. I was really hungry afterwards. I just drank some Pellegrino. I did not cheat. Yes. What are some healthy recipes? What are some healthy meals that you guys drink? It's super loud because they're blending, so I got to talk louder. What are some healthy recipes that you guys make or know of that you can share with me? Comment, comment down below, let me know. I don't have that much time today. I gotta go drop off my computer. I don't know if you can hear that. It sounds like a bomb. They're like blending a tree back there or something. It's the good news, I'm down to 152, 152. 
like seriously, they're blending a rock or something. I'm trying to get below 150, and then the ultimate goal is 140, actually. I know, that's pretty wild, right? I'm trying to cut like crazy right now, 140. Because I pull a 12 hour a day on Wednesdays, I don't go to my normal keen coffee because I don't go home till way later. I go to another coffee shop. This is a coffee shop that's really close to our church. The coffee's all right. It's popping here. Thank you. Crisp coffee, oat milk latte. It's good because of the oat milk. <laughs> they use Illy coffee here, Illy beans. Yo! Hello, Pastor John fan. This is Hannah. She That's used to the come best out. Pastor. She's lying. No. She used to come to our college ministry. But now she hustles. She hustles hustle. as a barista. She hustles as a college student. She's one of the best baristas here. Crisp coffee. Make sure you ask for Hannah to make it. She makes this sick blueberry matcha drink that I can't drink anymore because it's so high in sugar and I'm getting fat. <laughs> getting fat. It tastes Jeez. so good though. It's good seeing Thank you. you. Good seeing you too. Hannah. Pastor John. Best barista. Yeah, that was Hannah. She's come out to our college ministry, but she's hustling. About 4 p.m. Gotta get back to church. 12 hour day today. Let's go. Have you guys seen Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift? I'm gonna drift to work. Now I'm in this awesome race car called a Toyota Corolla. I think it's the luxury edition. You guys better be ready for this. Drift off! Today is the last night we are doing centralized small groups, otherwise known as on-campus small groups. But this is actually where we are gonna launch all these people out. So they become small groups. They're all eating. They have been meeting together for about... This is my friend Joel here. How you doing? Man? I love this guy. I love this guy Faithful, too. faithful man thank who helps us with security. Absolutely. I feel so safe when Joel is here. Oh, thank you. Thank no, you, sir, for being here. My pleasure. There's a Sam here. He's also a faithful, faithful security man helping us be safe. Thank you for being here, sir. You're welcome. Thank it's you. All right. It's like almost 8.30 p.m. We just, uh, bye, Mary. Thank you for being here. Just saying bye to someone there. Bye. Bye-bye. It's like almost 9 p.m. We did uh, something called Centralized Small Groups, which is we met here for six weeks on Wednesday nights, and we tried our best to provide content and then train a bunch of different groups of people to become a small group where they continue to meet on a weekly basis. And my closing thoughts for tonight on this vlog, I wanted to talk about this idea of small group. You know, in the church, we call it small groups. Whether you're a Christian or not, or go to church or not, I think you would agree with what, what I'm about to say. That it is extremely helpful to have a small group of people in which you kind of share life with and you meet together consistently. You know, for some people, it's a CrossFit gym. For others, it's like a video game club. Maybe it's some kind of scrapbooking club. But it's like that weekly meeting that you have with people where you're spending time together. And I think what the church does that makes it different from just a club is that we involve a, a spiritual aspect to it where we're growing in our belief to Christ and things like that. But I think there's a lot of other things that we do that I think a lot of you guys do too outside of the church. And this is the part that I think you would really agree with, which is in this weekly small group, you not only laugh together and have fun, which is very important, but it's a small group where you could share life together, share struggles, find support, be able to seek wisdom, do acts of kindness for each other. So it's more than just a club. It's more than just uh, exercise. You meet together and you're actually sharing life with each other, keeping each other accountable, protecting each other from the bad stuff that goes on in life. So I hope that you all have a small group, group that you consistently meet with. If you don't, uh, come check out my church. We will try to find your small group and maybe you'd be interested in kind of being part of our church. We call it a church family. Whether you're part of the church or not, hopefully you have a close group of people that you are sharing life with. I think everyone needs that and I hope you have that in life. Those are my closing thoughts. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Hit the notification bell. Leave comments down below. Ask me questions. Tell me what you guys want to see, what you want to hear about. Thanks. Thanks.